Hi, I'm Jilly from Baby Sleep Made Simple. Every Tuesday, I answer baby and toddler sleep questions on my Facebook page. The video that you're about to watch is me answering in detail a specific question sent in by an exhausted mom. If you've got a question for me, post it in the comments below. I hope you enjoy the video. First of all, what is the rock and play? For those of you that haven't heard of the rock and play, I just am gonna show you a picture here. So it's this little chair that your baby sits in, mostly sleeps in, and they're very reclined, as you can see, and it both rocks um, manually and also vibrates. So it's like a vibrating, a vibrating chair. A lot of parents end up using the rock and play if their baby has reflux uh, when they're young because that elevation really does help with reflux. My job is to support parents and also to educate parents. And you know, my top priority is the safety of your baby. So I'm not gonna preach and I'm not, I definitely don't judge any parent when they tell me the different sleep environment that their baby has. But just so parents know, the rock and play is not um, officially recommended as a sleep space by you know the American Academy of Pediatrics. Just so you know, and you can make an informed decision if you decide you wanna try the, re the rock and play with your little one, definitely speak to your baby's pediatrician first. There are three functions of the rock and play. So you have the vibration, you have the containment, and then you have the fact that there's some elevation, so your baby's head is elevated. So what I recommend is that we separate out those three functions of the rock and play and we work on them pretty much one at a time so that it's a bit slower on your baby and gives her more time to adapt. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna wean your baby off of the vibration. So you want to wean her off of needing motion to sleep. So let's say there are five different levels to the rock and play and right now your baby sleeps on level five all night long. The first thing that I would have you do is, if she's always slept at level five, then what you wanna do is tonight, you wanna to turn it down to level four. And you're only gonna use the vibration or the motion while your baby's falling asleep. And then about 20 minutes after she falls asleep, you're gonna turn the vibration off. And you're going to get her used to sleeping in a motionless space overnight. When she wakes in the night, you can go back to having it at level four to help her calm down and fall asleep. And then again, 15, 20 minutes later, you want to turn off the vibration. So on night two, you want to turn down her level to level three. And the night after that, you want to turn down to level two and so on. And just remember, for the majority of your baby's sleep overnight, you want to have the vibra vibrations be off. You want to have her sleeping in a motionless space. What you finally want to do when you get down to that last step and she was on level one last night, then it's time to get her used to falling asleep without the motion. And I would probably still recommend that you keep her in the rock and play because you don't want to change too many variables at once. So keep her in the rock and play, but what you can do is you can kind of manually rock it uh, to help her settle down and fall asleep. And what you can do now if you want to take the slower approach is you can now hold her or rock her to sleep and then once she's in the sleep, you're gonna put her in her bed. Or if you think that she's done quite well with reducing the motion and she was never that addicted to the motion anyway, then you could have her practice falling asleep in her crib. It's really up to you. It's up to how hooked she is on the motion. So you can decide that uh, depending on your individual baby. Once you've gotten there, she's pretty much weaned off of the motion or the vibration. So that's fantastic. What we need to do now is we need to start weaning her off of the containment of the rock and play. So this is where we're going to have her start sleeping in her crib. There's two things I recommend for this phase while we wean off of containment. The first one is I really think this is one of those scenarios where you should use a specialized sleep sack. If your baby was two months old, then I would say go for the swaddle, go for a swaddle blanket, go for the miracle blanket, go for the swaddle strap a proper swaddle blanket where your baby is swaddled in. But since your little gal is seven months old, she no longer can be swaddled, she's really too old, because most, more than likely she's rolling independently. So what you can do instead is use a swaddle transition blanket. And these blankets are really great because they still provide a feeling of containment, but they're safe for older babies and safe for babies that are rolling. So the two that I recommend are the Love to Dream and the Zippity Zip. The Love to Dream, I actually had two moms write in this week specifically telling me how much they love the Love to Dream. Or you could try the Zippity Zip. 
Uh, the Zippity Zip I've been recommending for many years. I find that so many parents love the Zippity Zip. If their baby loved being swaddled, but now it's time to transition out of it, my go-to has always been the Zippity Zip and the majority of parents really love it. The second piece of advice that I have for you is you want to take your little one and when you do put her in the bed, you wanna have her feet touching the end of the crib because that's gonna send a signal to her that, oh look, I know where my boundaries are. I feel some boundaries, so therefore it can't be that different of a sleep space than the rock and play. And the third piece of advice I have for weaning off the containment deserves a little bit of a caveat because, well, I'll tell you what it is and then I'll go to that in a second. But I have had um, a mom specifically write to me because I was asking her several months ago, how did you wean off the rock and play? Do you have any tips I can give uh, to moms? And what she said was quite clever and it worked well for her little one. What she did is she created a nest in the baby's crib using rolled up towels and she put them under the fitted sheet. So what that means is she took like quite some big, big fluffy bath towels on night one and she rolled them up and she created either like a, you know, a U or maybe like a rectangle and she put them under the fitted sheet, really, really tight, really, really, really secured so that when she put her little one in the crib, there was still a feeling of, of a nest, right? And then every night she made the roll smaller and smaller and smaller until the boundaries just faded away. So she used a smaller towel on night, you know, two and three. Maybe eventually she got to using like kitchen towels where it's just a little bitty, you know, little bitty line that the baby could feel. But within a few days, maybe one week max, um, she had totally removed these completely from her baby's bed and her baby was then just sleeping in the crib on the mattress with a normal fitted sheet, you know, as recommended. It goes, you know, I should say that um, this is really isn't recommended. Um, if we're talking about having a completely safe sleep space, and I really wouldn't recommend it, especially for the younger babies, uh, five months and younger, your baby's quite big. But again, if you're even considering this because your baby loves a tight, contained sleeping space, then please, please, please talk to your baby's doctor and just say, this is what I heard. Do you think this is okay just for a few nights or not? There's no real way to wean off of the elevation. If you use the other tips of slowly weaning your baby off of the containment, off of the vibrations, then by the time you've done all that, your baby should really adapt to the crib um, better anyway. Your baby may need a little bit more hands-on support during this transition. So as you get her used to, let's say at first that you were rocking her to sleep and then putting her into her new, into her crib, but in this new environment that we just talked about, and she wakes up, you may have to use a little bit more hands-on to help her, help her transition. You may need to rock her body gently side to side. You may need to pat her at bottom, you know, sing to her. That's okay. Do whatever you can to get her used to falling asleep in this new sleep space. And then once you feel like she's quite used to it, then you wanna slowly just dial down your hands-on support. Remember, if you've got a question for me about your baby, toddler, or preschooler's sleep, post it in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer it on next Tuesday's Facebook Live. Make sure you follow my Facebook page, Baby Sleep Made Simple, so you can stay updated on everything baby, toddler, and preschooler sleep. Take care.